Hello, beloved. This is Pastor Whipple from the historic Mount Hebron Baptist Church, and I want to officially welcome you to online worship. Whether you're viewing us live or on a replay, thank you for joining us on today. We invite you to share this video on Facebook, share it on our YouTube page, and always go to our website, mounthebron.org. Now, either during this broadcast or at the conclusion, I invite you to sow into this ministry. Find us on Cash App. Our cash tag is dollar sign M-O-U-N-T. H-E-B-R-O-N, number two, number six, number five, number one, or follow us on Givelify at the historic Mount Hebron Baptist Church. Either way you're joining us today, thank you again for joining us. Share this video and get strength for your journey. Be blessed.
There's so much hate in this world. There's so much negativity going on. We gotta remind ourselves there's love in Jesus Christ. Good, y'all sound good. Say it. There you go. There you go. Say it. Oh, because. Run that back. Run that back. I didn't have the bullshit back today. They just declared, oh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. hold up the children and the youth on this day. I just pray right now, Father God, that you touch somebody's heart this morning, Father God, that you move on a youth heart this morning, Father God, that they come straddling down the aisle asking, what must I do to be saved, Father God? Who is this Jesus that y'all preach about, Father God? How is it that these individuals can have cornrows and braids and twists and look like the people in the street, but they serve you, Father God? Who is this Jesus that allows anybody to come to them, Father God? We just want you to be praised this morning, Father God, and have all the glory, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, right now for what you will do, what you have been doing, and what we know you will do in the future, Father God. We give your son, Jesus Christ, all the praise and all the glory. In his name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
them in a beautiful way, man. We thank God. We thank God for another opportunity to be in God's house one more time. Aren't you glad to be in God's house this morning? Aren't you glad to be in God's house this morning? Beloved of God, it, we are continuing. We are continuing in our friends and family season. And so we thank God. We thank God that today, somebody shout today. Today. Today is Youth and Young Adult Day here at Mount Eden. Amen. So in this season, in this season of the friends and family season, we encourage you to invite folk to church with you in this season uh, because there is a blessing, watch this y'all, being in the worship experience. There is a blessing being in the worship experience. I know folk got spoiled uh, watching church online during the pandemic, but don't you know there is a difference, watch this, being in the house. There is a difference being in the house, and we are so thankful. We are so thankful. I am excited. I am excited and overjoyed to see so many of these young people in church. And I tell you all the time, you do not have young people in church. You have a dead church. When you do not have young people in your church, then you have a dead church. Now, I want you also to be patient with our young people. Yeah. Be patient with our young people because yes, some of them got to get up and go to the bathroom. Some of them are hungry. Some of y'all got to go to the bathroom. Some of y'all hungry. But I need y'all to be patient with our young people and, and encourage them along the way. Amen? I am, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for Mount Hebron for yesterday. Yesterday we had a wonderful, a beautiful, a homegoing celebration for Sister Ruby Green. Amen? And so please keep our family lifted in prayer. I'm thankful um, because we did everything decently and in order. It was heartfelt. Um, and so we uh, said, see you later, Sister Ruby Green, in a wonderful and a majestic way. So please keep our family in prayer. Uh, don't forget also, beloved, we have our church meeting. Our church meeting is now, of course, on the 24th, uh, the last Saturday of this month at 12 noon. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so in a few moments when you young adult day, we always acknowledge, we always acknowledge our, our young people and their accomplishments. And we're going to do that in a moment. Um, but we want to remind you also that this Saturday, this Saturday is our Father's Day brunch. Amen? Amen. This Saturday is our Father's Day brunch. We are excited about that. Uh, I'm excited uh, that our very own brother, Jason the Whipple, is going to bring the message that morning. Amen. The fact was going to be catered. Amen. We got a band playing. What's the name of your band, Brother Tep? The Power Younger Project. The Power Younger Pie Project. They're going to come here. They blessed us last year. Uh, amen. They ain't sing their gospel song. Amen. But, but y'all remember, y'all were familiar with the Frankie the Beverly and the Babies. Amen. Y'all were familiar with every song they sung that was not in the hymn. We had a good time in the social hall. Amen. All right, well, let me say this. Let me say this. I gotta remind you of one major thing. We say this every Sunday during the offering time. We have three HVACs. Somebody say three. three. We got three HVACs. One in here for the sanctuary, the other one for the offices, and of course uh, the, the hallway. And the third one, y'all, the third one is for the social hall. I'm trying to get you ready. I'm trying to get you ready. The third one is for the social hall. Let me be clear. The HVAC in the social hall has not yet been purchased. Well, Pastor, how much that cost? It cost $26,000. So y'all keep coming to church. Y'all keep giving. We have got two HVACs. We have got new doors. We're replacing things in, 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 in due, due season. And God is blessing this house. Amen? Amen. Here's what I need you to do. I don't want you to have any excuse not to come this Saturday. I don't want you to have any excuse not to come this Saturday for the Father's Day brunch. Amen. So let me help you out. There's no air conditioning in the social hall. Some of y'all have been so spoiled with church. Y'all forgot how back in the day, y'all came to church and there wasn't no air conditioning. Amen. 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 Yes, we're going to have the grits. Yes, we're going to have the eggs. Yes, we're going to have all that good food. But I need you to go to Five Below or Target or Amazon. Get you one of them fans to go around your neck. Get you one of them nice fans to go around. You know what I'm talking about. Where it will blow right in your face. Keep your makeup on, all that good stuff. Keeping you looking good. Amen. And come to church anyway. Somebody shout anyway. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Kyle. We have a good time on Saturday. Amen. 
Uh, then, of course, uh, next Sunday is Father's Day. Next Sunday is Father's Day. We're celebrating the Fathers and Juneteenth. Celebrating the Fathers and Juneteenth. Then I'm excited on the fourth Sunday. On the fourth Sunday, of course, is uh, Women's Day. Uh, amen. Amen for the women. Women's Day, I guess, preacher is my big sister, Reverend Tiffany Boyd, the pastor and founder of New Hope Ministries. Ask the folks wear their favorite pastel color. Uh, and so we just thank God. We thank God for that. I told you there's a lot happening here at Mount Hebron. And for those who missed it, we had an awesome Bible study this past Wednesday. We had an awesome Bible study this past Wednesday. Talked by our very own Reverend Daryl Holmes Jr. Amen. Amen. So what do you need to do? This Wednesday at 6.30 will be the conclusion of that wonderful two-part series. I need you all to log in. I need you all to log in on uh, Zoom and join us for that Bible study this Wednesday at 6.30. Amen? Uh, I want to give a sanctified shout-out to uh, Brother Tevin, who's doing a wonderful job with all these choirs, juggling all these choirs. Amen? Um, he's, doing he's doing a great job. And uh, also, for Father's Day, so here's how we're doing it. This Sunday, Generation Royalty Choir is singing for you, the young adult day. Amen? Yeah. They're doing a great job. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Next Sunday, for Father's Day, the men are singing. The men are singing. Amen? Now, for those of you who were not here, when our, when our men sang last time in service, they, they listened. The walls were shaking. The demons were trembling. Angels got jealous. We had a good time. Amen? And so we just thank God, we thank God for our men uh, singing uh, on next Sunday. Uh, now, now, here's the part I'm, I'm looking forward to. We are going to now acknowledge uh, our young people. Clap your hands for our young people. <laughs> Brother Patrick, Brother Rep. Home, all right, all right, we are ready. We are ready to rock and roll. D3 behind you, you know that, right? Amen. On his heels, Jesus, on his heels. I like that, amen. Won't you bless God for our youth and youth adult minister, Reverend Earl Holmes Jr. and uh, Brother Tony Patrick, amen. Uh, and, and watch this, y'all. Uh, Trustee Gloria Chafin, amen, who is uh, representing our scholarship ministry. And as they come, as they come, we want to show you uh, where your tithe and offerings go. All folks always complaining, the church taking their money. Baby, tell me, let me tell you something. Ain't nobody taking your money. Amen. We are using it to bless those uh, right here with us and encourage them along the journey. Uh, and I want you to encourage these, these young people today in a mighty and majestic way because uh, I'm grateful for the teachers, uh, these new, new age teachers who don't mind uh, putting up uh, names of HBCUs in their classroom. I don't mind these new teachers telling you what white supremacy is all about and what it entails so we won't be confused or fooled. I don't mind these new teachers who are letting us know that you are black and beautiful. Amen? Amen. All right. Trustee Chase.
study with the emergency medical technician, also known as EMT. And I'm here Baptist Church is very proud of our graduate. Let's congratulate you. Yeah, amen. Yeah. 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 
story here. Consistency is what God is looking for. Consistency in your service. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, everybody. We have so much that we're trying to do for the youth, and we're just asking that you continue to do the support that you've been doing. We would love to bring back Children's Church as well. So we're pushing to bring Children's Church back. We're asking that you bring your kids. Bring your kids' kids. We know you got some grandkids hiding away in there. So please bring back your kids' kids. If you have any type of ideas, ministry ideas for the youth, don't be afraid to bring them to myself or Brother Tony Patrick. We are trying our best to jumpstart this youth ministry and push it further because we are the future of Mount Hebron. Amen? Amen. Wasn't that nice? Wasn't that nice? Amen. So beloved, so beloved, two things, two things. One, I say this all the time. Don't expect this generation of young people to be like your generation of young people. Back in your day, y'all ran to the microphone to rehearse your Easter speech. Y'all had on your white dresses. Y'all had on your white suits. Look like little bishops and little apostles. These young people ain't doing that. They'll come to church with their jeans on. They'll come to church with their hoodies on. But they come to church. And so, and so I want you to encourage our young people to keep coming to church. Uh, that's number one. Number two, understand, understand that church, listen, looks different today than it did 20 years ago. The church today looks different than it did 20 years ago. Amen. And so whatever you got going on, because all of us got something going on, have your thing going on in the house of God. Is that all right? Come on, bless God for our young people one more time. And for those of you who do not know, for those of you who do not know, a few years ago, a few years ago, we instituted the Tony Patrick Award for service in this church because Brother Tony Patrick, in and of himself, uh, represents y'all. He represents leadership. He represents service. And he doesn't ask for anything in return. He does a great job. Amen. He does a great job. He does a great job serving. He does a great job leading. He does a great job uh, keeping people together. Keeping people together. And we applaud him for that. I thank God for him. Um, and folk always say, oh, shouldn't they be deacons by now? Let me help you. You don't have to have a title to serve. Can I help somebody? You don't have to have a title to serve. Let me help you one more time. You don't have to have a title to be nice to folk. Alright baby, it's offering time. You ain't clapping no more. It's offering time. It's offering time in the house today. Scripture says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men and women given to your bosom. It's offering time in the house today. Let me hear this as our trustees come. I want to, I want to encourage you all. Listen, for those who don't tithe, I want to encourage you to begin to tithe. I'm talking to my $10 givers. I'm talking to my $25 givers. I'm talking to my tippers. I want to encourage you all to start tithing. Why? Because we can do more when everybody tithes. I like it when I start talking about money, uh, Minister Knox, because that's when everybody starts looking at their phones. They don't hear me. All of a sudden, they point out the light bulb that went out. Oh, look, the carpet red. I don't hear nothing he's saying. But we need everybody, somebody say everybody, to tithe. Somebody say tithe. Trustee Chapin talked about our scholarship ministry, talked about our scholarship ministry. Uh, and what I love about our scholarship ministry is how they take serious what they do uh, in terms of encouraging our young people who graduate uh, high school and go on to college. And then, listen, listen, I salute, I salute our generation of royalty because, listen, there are some requirements, there are some rules and regulations for the scholarship. And, and unfortunately, everybody doesn't doesn't meet those qualifications or requirements. But so I say, but in this church, everybody gets something. Y'all don't know when to shout. I'm trying to help you. So I'm thankful for Generation Royalty. I'm thankful for Brother Tony Patrick that everybody gets something. Okay, now let me brag one more time. Let me brag one more time. Sister Sky 
when we went into the pandemic and we had to do online worship and folk was emailing us and commenting, talking about uh, how the online worship should be. We're not NBC, we're not CNN. Amen, we did the best we could with what we had. We had two iPads, uh, uh, some cell phones, and choppy Wi-Fi. But a young lady came in here and started bossing everybody around, including the pastor. And then, guess what? Our online worship got better and better and better and better. And so we thank God for that. The youngest in charge, Sister Sky Hawkins. Amen. for our guest preacher here on today. Um, to say, to put it lightly, I want to allow you to understand what's happening. We do not call ourselves an historic Mount Hebrew Baptist Church because it sounds nice. Right. God has placed a unique call on the sacred space called Mount Hebrew to anoint and touch and bless folk in a mighty and a major way. Folk who have been blessed to come out of Mount Hebrew in any capacity, continue to do wonderful things in life and in ministry. And I'm so grateful today that we are blessed to hear one of the rising stars of pulpit ministry in the person of Minister Kevin Knock Jr. I thank God for his humility. I thank God for his availability. Um, so for those of you who ain't caught yet, let me come help you. He is not one of these arrogant preachers who come in with an entourage and a whole bunch of requirements. He's not going to ask for uh, water with three ice cubes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. He's not going to come in here and, and demand a certain type of honorary. But he is just grateful for the opportunity to serve and serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. He's been serving for years as an organist. He was on the organ for a very long time. Uh, but, but, but God called him from the organ to the pulpit. Oh, and so we thank God for that. We also thank God. We also thank God with him on today. Is his wife, Sister Tia, is with us on today. We got some things for her. Amen. And so, Minister Kevin Knock is an associate minister at Life Church, where uh, Pastor Todd, no, oh, Charles Hall. Pastor Charles Hall serves as pastor. Uh, pastor Hall is a prophetic voice in the kingdom. I thank God for his creativity. I thank God for who he is uh, as a pastor and as a friend. I thank God for him releasing Minister Knock on this morning to preach for our youth and young adult day. And so, beloved, after our generation of royalty choir will sing, the next voice you will hear will be that of Minister Kevin Knock Jr. for his youth and young adult day. The church say amen.
excited to be at the house on this afternoon. I'm sure that the presence of the Lord is here. We be honored, God, for showing up today. It's mighty nice to be on the Lord's side, and I think all of us can testify there's no other place that I'd rather be. It is an honor and a privilege uh, to be here on this morning, and we just honor God for showing up, continuing to breathe the breath of life into us. Surely he didn't owe it to us, but he graced us with it, and so we don't come and take this moment lightly. Can you help me celebrate the set man of this house, Dr. Paul Rookie, we honor you. And can you help me celebrate the youth leader here, Roman Daryl Holmes? Thank you so much. He literally reached out to me on my birthday. Um, wow. And I'm just uh, honored uh, to be here. I had the honor to beat him literally on New Year's Eve. I was here playing for uh, Pastor Marvin right, 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 And right. we had a good old time, I would say. <laughs> sure. And so it's good. This moment is easier for me to be honest with you because of the woman that stands beside me. Can you help me celebrate my wife here? I love you and I thank God for her. I'm just going to what she did. This woman is with me just as easy a moment because she is here with me. Uh, can you help me celebrate this youth music ministry and all of you throughout the congregation? To my brother Kevin. And to you, uh, Minister Dark Lee, who is here with me today, that says thank you so much. He's my brother. He's always uh, looking out for me. Well, we're going to go straight into the word of the Lord. If you could turn with me to Psalm chapter 71. Psalm chapter 71. And we're going to look at verses 12 through 14. Psalm chapter 71. If it is the custom to stand here, I'm going to ask that everyone would stand for the reading of the word of the Lord. Psalm chapter 71, verse 12 through 14. I'm going to be coming from the Amplified Version. So it may read just a little bit different, but it all, it all is coming from the Holy Book. Amen. 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 Psalm chapter 71, verse 12 through 14. You'll find that these words have been written. I also honor my pastor, Pastor Charles Hall, right. uh, for allowing me to be here today. And we are praying for him. He's preaching for Pastor Reggie Johnson's 32nd preaching anniversary. Right, so right, right. Him as well. My mother, my aunt, my cousin, my aunt, they are here today. On, Thank you so much Amen. for your support. Psalm chapter 71, and we're going to look at verses 12 through 14. Amplified Virgin says, O oh God, do not be far from me. O oh my God, come quickly to help me. Let those who attack my life be ashamed and consumed. Let them be covered with reproach and dishonor who seek to injure me. Verse 14 says, but as for me, I will wait and hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Our Father and our strong God, before we ask for anything, we simply want to thank you for everything. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time that we shall share together. God, it is my prayer now, God, that you will open the heart, that the ear will hear exactly what it is that you have to say. And through that, we'll leave this place both challenged and changed. It's in Jesus' name I pray and let the people of God say amen. 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 Verse 14 says, but as for me, I will wait and hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. For the next couple of minutes, I want to talk from the theme, it did not kill me. It did not kill me. Look at your neighbor and look at him with in confidence and say, neighbor, I'm still here. Now I need you to look at another neighbor in full confidence and say, neighbor, come on, celebrate like you know and say, neighbor, I'm still here. In life, we will experience beloved moments that can lead us to a dark place, a dark place in relationships, work, home, and even church. And I believe that the good rabbi here can even testify the title that he holds and the responsibilities that he has. Folk may think that it's easy, but it does have its dark moments. Dark moments 
Whether it's something someone said or did, the dark moments tend to sneak up on us. Whatever has caused us every now and again to question, am I ever even coming out of this dark moment? Whatever it is that you're facing, we experience those moments that have us questioning whether or not we're coming out. It amazes me that the month of June is Mental Health Month. And somebody even suggests, why on a youth day are you preaching about a dark moment, about it did not kill us? And can I help you that the reality is even young people during this day and time, because their voices aren't being heard, living in a dark moment, not even knowing everything that they may experience in school, on their walk home, or whatever it may be, they have dark moments that causes them that will make them feel uncomfortable. And the reality is, is in those dark moments, they may want to do some things. They may want to say some things that causes them and will push them, excuse me, to a place that they never desired to be in. I believe that all of us can testify that we've been in moments where we were thinking things that we thought we would never think. We were saying things that we never thought we would say. But thanks be to God that the Bible says in this life, you shall have tribulation. But his word says, be of good cheer. I did not get caught up or soak myself in the moment of being dark. And I want to kill that demon right quick. Uh, I'm having a bad day. I'm having a bad week. I'm having a bad month. I'm having a bad year. No, beloved, you're just having a moment. And in that moment, there may be something that God is trying to show you. And the point that we ought to ask the question to God, what is it that you're trying to show me in that moment? The Bible is one thing that is our best friend. The old school folks would say, when life bring you lemons, make lemon juice. I'm going to catch this to the young people as well. The young people would say, when life bring you lemons, it make lemon juice and mix something else with it. Someone ought to get excited about the fact that although we are experiencing or may have been experiencing a difficult moment, we are not stuck in this thing forever. Even Jesus discovered, excuse me, Jesus experienced a difficult moment at the ninth hour on the cross. Y'all don't want to talk back to me, but it was at 12 noon when it became dark and Jesus experienced a moment. But the beauty, and I can say this now, I don't want to jump too far ahead, but I'm so glad to know that Jesus died. And that's the reason why it did not kill us, simply because Jesus died on our behalf. And somebody ought to get excited today to know that whatever it is that you're experiencing, Jesus died and he also did it with a plan. Can I help you? The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. He says, for I know the thoughts and plans I have for you. Here it is. He, does, he says, plans of peace and well-being. He says, but not disaster. You go to verse 12 and it says, all you got to do is fall on your knees and take it to the Lord in prayer. Whatever it is, beloved, whatever dark moment that you're experiencing, know that God is with you in the midst of it all. Psalm 71 is a prayer for deliverance and protection in the face of enemies and adversity. It expresses David's trust in God, steadfastness, and faithfulness throughout his life. David begins by seeking ref refuge in God, expressing his hope that God will not abandon him throughout the course of his life. Have you ever been in a dark place where you could, all you could do was call on God, having a messed up mind, knowing if not knowing whether or not you will overcome. And the Bible says in Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, that we will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, even in this, I'm going to have a testimony. Come on, I need you to talk to your neighbor and help me out just a little bit and say, David, even in this, I'm going to have a testimony. And you may not feel like it right now. You experience depression. You experience low self-esteem. You experience moments that you, you looked at the pills on your nightstand. You looked at the blade and wanted to uh, slit your wrist. You wanted to pull the trigger on yourself. And I uh, hear the Lord saying right now that somebody came with the mindset, I'm going to bless home. I'm going to come to church. I'm going to shout. I'm going to dance. I'm going to worship. And when I get home, I'm just going to say it's all over, but I'm here to kill that demon a day to know that God walks with us, he talks with us, and he tells us that we are his. We are not, dare not get caught up in what it is that we are facing in the moment. I'm so glad to know that everything that we experience in life
thing that should have taken us out, especially before we got wicked, before we got saved. I'm so glad to know that the God that we serve looked beyond our faults and he continues to supply each and every last one of our needs. We understand he does not owe it to us, but the fact that he loves us so much so, I, I got a reason to celebrate in here today. And I don't know who I'm talking to in here today, but somebody is ready to give up. Uh, but the psalmist says, don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. I understand that God is with me through the ups and the downs. And the best time I could think of is when I'm in my worst moments because I know that at some point it will turn around. It's just like Job. Uh, though he slay me in the midst of it all, it could have killed him, but Job continued to trust. Uh, it was Sarah who did not get pregnant until she was 90 years old. It seemed like it was never going to happen, but I can assure you, at some point you got to have uh, some trust. It was the woman with the issue of blood uh, that at some point uh, she walked out in faith uh, and said, look, I got to crawl through this crowd. Uh, and she touched the hem of his garment. Uh, some would have given up after losing everything. Uh, but I thank God today uh, that through the many dangers, tolls and snares, we have already come. It was grace uh, that brought us, saved us far, and it's grace uh, that will lead us on. Oh, I'm so glad to know that God loves us so much so uh, that he continues to protect. He's a mind regulator. Uh, he's a mind regulator. He's a, he's a heart fixer. I'm talking about somebody that don't know uh, which route your child's going to go. Somebody uh, don't know, but look at your neighbor. Thank you, Quiet said, I need you to survive. Uh, don't you give up. Don't you give in. Uh, I need you to survive. I'm talking about whatever it is that you are facing in this journey called life. As dark as it may, as dark as it may look, the sun shall shine again. And somebody ought to get excited in here today to know that through it all, I learned to trust in Jesus. Through it all, I learned to trust him. I could have given up. I could have given up. But when you understand, just like Ruth, there's an assignment on your life. All you can do is hold on to God's unchanging hand. Here it is. Uh, my first point, uh, the first reason we weren't killed in a dark place is simply because we're not alone. Check out the text. Verse 12 says, oh God, do not be far from me. He says, oh my God, come quickly to help me. David shows us obviously that he had a relationship with God. And I remember, uh, you said it earlier, devotions. Uh, and I remember that the deacons doing devotions were saying all you got to do is call them on the main line and tell them what you want. And so here it is. God is with you always. That's what his word said. He is with us always. All you got to do is call him. Now, just because the problem doesn't change and the moment that you call him does not mean uh, that the, the situation isn't turning around for your good. I'm going to help you out in the midst of any type of storm, let me help you to understand that God, he is with you always. Let the church say always. Come on, let the church in confidence say always. He is with us always, and so we are never alone. Uh, the hymnologist says he promised never to leave us, never to leave us alone, and so don't you get caught up in what you're experiencing again in the moment, uh, because the Lord is with us. Let the church say always. Yes, sir. Uh, so, uh, we not do not give up uh, just because you're in uh, a dark moment. Uh, David uh, himself uh, had to count on God. Here it is. Jesus, he died on our behalf so that we uh, would not, uh, uh, we will experience, excuse me, difficult moments. But even in those difficult moments, because he died on our behalf, we understand that even in difficult moments, God is capable. In fact, his word said he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly. Above. Come on, we got some Bible readers in here. Uh, exceedingly and abundantly. Abundantly above all that we can ask and all that we can think we ought not give up. Uh, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody. That's the one that we're connected to. Look at your neighbor and say you're not in it alone. Uh, you're not in it alone. And so that then says to me my second point. Don't allow what has happened to you or what people have said to you to consume you. Uh, I'm right here in the text. Because he said, let those who attack my life be ashamed and consumed. It didn't say the one who was attacked to allow the situation to consume them. But he said, let those who attack my life 
be ashamed and, 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 and not consumed. He, he says in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 and, and 23, it says, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. There are new they are new every morning. Verse, excuse me. Great is thy faithfulness. The word reproach, meaning disapproval or disappointment. That is something that we may experience. But let God, look at your neighbor and say, the battle's not yours. The battle is not yours. Whatever it is that you are facing in a, whatever dark moment you may be dealing with, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the battle is not yours. Whatever it is, leave it in God's hands. He will work it out for you. How do I know? Because his word says in Numbers 23 and 19 that he's not a man that he should lie. His promises are yea and amen. So don't you give up again. I'm going to keep reiterating this because I need us to understand that all of us in here dealing with something, whether we know what it is or whether we don't know what it is that each one of us are doing. But we need, uh, and let, let me just say this, and the Lord just dropped this on me. This is the reason why we got to be careful how we treat people. Because you don't know what someone is going through. It, it does not hurt to speak. It does not hurt to smile. It does not hurt to love. And, 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 and that might be my beginning is, but I think it's safe to say one of the lacks in church this day and time is the lack of love. We are so busy judging. And here it is. There's only one who has a right to judge. The downfall to that is we're pushing people to further in their darkness, if you will, just because we're so busy chastising folk and being nasty towards folk, but oh, we're here to break that barrier today that we are going to learn to be nice to people. We're going to learn to smile to people. We're going to learn to hug on people. We're going to learn to show the love of Christ. Uh, because the reality is the love that Christ shows us. Uh, he should have given up on us a long time ago. If you ask me, I should have been in a burning hell. But God, I'm so grateful to know that he continues uh, to keep the right hand of right righteousness on me. I'm almost done. Which takes me to my third and final point that when you experience difficult moments in life, what you ought to do even in a dark moment, the Bible says in everything we ought to give thanks. Am I right about it? And so because we ought to give thanks, because it did not kill you, it's the right reason why you ought to maintain your praise. Too many of us because the reality is there are many of us Reverend Holmes that wanted to stay home today with the cover over our head. There are many of us that wanted to take six shots of Ciroc. There are many of us who wanted to do things that appeared to be the, bit of the easier way out. Many of us wanted to smoke the blunt. Many of us wanted to just give up and give and we wanted to take the easy route. Ah, but the thing is, is because I know that God is with me, regardless of what I'm facing, I'm going to continue to maintain my praise. Somebody in here today uh, man, take your praise uh, despite what you're going through. Somebody in here today, uh, you are not, not give up. You are not giving. And the Bible says, uh, it's, it's amazing how David says this uh, in Psalm chapter 71. Uh, but he ends the psalm by saying, uh, let everything. Now I know there was a funnel here yesterday. Uh, but today we are here in our right mind. Uh, and so we owe God something. Can I be a little transparent? Uh, it was in May of the, last, the beginning of last month. It was last month when I went to the doctors. My blood pressure was high. 196 over 117. Stroke status. Heart issues. I still continue to push through. I wanted to give up. I wanted to give in. But I'm so glad that it did not kill me. I should have been dead in a burning grave after drunk driving. I should have been dead after going through hell and high waters. Oh, some of y'all can relate with me here today. That after going through hell and high waters, you can testify that I'm still here. And by the grace of God, I owe him something. Can you testify that you owe him something? Through it all, I can say this is my story. 
the best thing you can do is worship God.
There was a woman that suffered with blood for 12 years and did not expect to come out of it. Show me if you can heal her after 12 years. The God that we serve that created this earth in seven days. If he could create an entire world in seven days, there's no reason despite where you are to limit what God can do. And there's a need in this place for us not to take this moment for granted. Somebody is hurting. He's a way maker, way maker, mirror world. Open your mouth. Promise keeps me. He's a light. Father, we come right now, first and foremost, we thank you that last night was not our last night. Yeah. Father, we thank you. Although you, we don't deserve it, you continue to breathe the breath of life into us. And so, God, we are more desperate for you now more than ever. Yeah. God, I'm praying that whoever thinks that the child doesn't stand a chance to live because of life decisions, we kill that demon right now. Father, there's somebody who wanted to commit suicide. We commit God, we, we, we speak against that right now. God, there's somebody who's dealing with low self-esteem and don't know the value that they hold. God, we trust you even now in the name of the Lord Jesus. God, we ask right now, God, God, that as your presence is filled in this place, we pray, God, God, that you wish, uh, God, release the right hand of righteousness on each of us. God, God, that whatever it is, God, touch our minds because you're my heart regulator. God, heal our hearts in the name of Jesus because they have been broken. God, we didn't know which way to turn, God, but God, now we look up to you. God, we trust you, God, in the name of Jesus. God, I speak, God, life into each and every person in this place under the sound of my voice. I pray right now, God, that they won't give up on you. They won't rob you of the time that you're lending to us. And so, God, I ask right now, God, that you will continue to have your way in our lives like never before. It's in the name of Jesus. We call on you because when you call on Jesus, things begin to shift. Somebody call on the name of Jesus. Come on, call on the name of Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's who you are. We, God, sealed this prayer saying, your word says you have not, because you ask not. So touch us as only you can. Heal that one that has cancer. Heal that one that has AIDS or HIV. Heal that one that has sickle cell. Heal that one. God, that has mental disease, in the name of Jesus, God, whatever caused us to be in a dark place, God, we trust you like never before. And we, God, seal this prayer, know that all things will work together. That's right. That's the thing. All things will work together. That's the thing. All things will work together for the good of us that love you according to your purpose. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Let the people of God say amen. He's a way neighbor.